I'm Sam Machin. I'm going to be showing you how to get started using Jambones with Node-RED. Node-RED is a low-code application for event-driven applications. What this means is we can build our call flows using simple graphical drag and drop tools in a web browser. There's no need to write any code. Uh, Node-RED is an open source application just like Jambones. This means you can install it locally on your own laptop, on a server you might control, or there are various third-party services out there who will run the service for you. Today we're going to be doing it on my laptop. So let's see and go about getting started. Okay, here we are on the Node-RED website, node-red.org. Uh, we'll go down here to this Get Started, and we're going to choose where we want to run it. In this case, we're going to run it locally. Let's click there. And we have a, a command to run here, installing with npm. Node-RED is a Node-based application, so we install it. We need Node on our computer. Uh, the prerequisites here, you just need a supported version of Node.js. We'll open up a window and we'll drop that command in there. sudo npm install minus g for global, uh, unsafe perm for some, uh, some warnings, and just the Node-RED package. We'll click apply. It may have asked you for your password there. I think I must have passed, typed my password in just now, so it remembered it. And now it'll just sit there and run away for a minute or two. There we go, all set. So now we can start Node-RED just by typing the command Node-RED. Uh, this is what we see when Node-RED starts up. Uh, various information, the version we're running, 3.0.2, the latest, a little bit about our system. Um, and this is the line we're looking for. Server now running at HTTP 127.0.0.1 on port 18.80. This is the local host address of my laptop. So I'm going to go open a web browser and go to that address and I'm presented with my Node-RED page. This is the default Node-RED uh, editor. So what we have on the left hand side here is our uh, palette of nodes. So these are all the standard nodes that Node-RED comes with out of the box. In the middle we have a canvas where we're going to build our flow. And on the right hand side we have an information window. Uh, this can show various things. So at the moment it's in debug because we've got a little bug here. Uh, there's a help section which will actually give us information about any of the nodes and that's kind of interactive so when I have a node selected on the canvas it'll bring up help there um, and there's a general kind of information navigator to see what we've got. Uh, I'll just leave that one. It should normally start off with a single flow one tap. Okay so what we want to do uh, when we're creating something in Node-RED is we drag and drop our nodes from our palette onto our canvas. Uh, the common ones these are these are ones you'll use a lot the inject node uh, basically just starts something going, so this will send a message in to kick kick the flow off if there's no other way of starting it. Uh, by default, that'll just send out a timestamp, so a number. Um, and this is our debug node. This will log things out to this little debug panel over here. So if I wire those two nodes together and I hit this deploy button, when I start a flow, it injects the timestamp and it just logs into the debug the timestamp and as you can see the time is going up there so that's that's pretty much the basic principle of building a flow we'll delete those okay so what we want to do is uh, we want to set up uh, node-red to use jambones so that we're going to need to install the jambones package so if we come over to this uh, right top right hand corner here the menu and we select manage palette we go over to the install tab and we search for Jambones, we should find the Jambones uh, contrib package for Node-RED. Version 2.3.0 is the latest that we just published today. And I'm going to click install. And again, that'll take a few seconds to install. And we should get a nice long list of nodes that have been added to the palette. Great. If I close that off, that message will disappear. If I scroll my palette right down now, I have all the Jambones nodes. So Node-RED is ready to, to talk to Jambones. Uh, what we need to do next is some configuration. So this is a little bit tricky. I'm running Node-RED on my laptop. Uh, my laptop's on my Wi-Fi at home. It's not uh, exposed to the public internet directly. So I need to be able to send webhooks from Jambones into my local machine. For this, we're gonna use uh, a third-party service called Ngrok. Ngrok is uh, a fantastic tool for exactly this use case, really. It allows you to uh, set up a tunnel from your laptop uh, wherever that may be, behind whatever network, out to Ngrok servers and just receives uh, all the webhooks on an address there which are sent for a single port. So a single application, in this case Node-RED, we can expose on the internet from locally running on our laptop. 
Um, if you're going to use this for production or anything or, or long term, you should look at, at uh, securing your Node-RED instance. We won't worry too much about that for today. Uh, there's some settings in the Node-RED instructions about putting a password on the editor and that kind of thing. Um, we don't actually need to worry too much even about the NGWOC uh, sign up. So we could sign up for an NGWOC account. Um, that would let us uh, have longer lived connections. And uh, if we paid for it, we'd get a persistent tunnel. But we'll just stick with the free service as is for now. So we can go back to the Node-RED application, go to our Manage Palette, and we can install the NGWOC node for Node-RED. This will actually install the NGWOC uh, binaries on your computer as well, so that it'll, it can be used that way. What we'll find now is we should have an NGWOC node added down here, this green one. Uh, so we'll put that in. You can see it's got its own little button because it can start it itself when it's clicked. And we're just going to wire that up to a debug. I'll clear my debug messages here. Now if we open up the NGWOC node to configure it, uh, what do we want? We don't, we're not using any auth because we haven't set up an account with NGWOC. We're going to leave our uh, protocol as HTTP and everything down here is standard. Um, we'll let it relay through uh, through the US just for now. Um, they've got different uh, different regions where the NGROC gateways run, but US will be fine. Uh, this can be set, I say, all these you can change if you're using kind of custom configuration um, and authentication, that kind of thing. But we'll just leave that all as default and hit deploy. Uh, the other thing I should mention is on this deploy button up here, there's actually a few options. By default, you'll probably have uh, full selected by, uh, by standard for Node-RED. If you change that to modified nodes, that won't restart every part of your application. It's quite useful when we're running Node-RED, um, which I'll show you in a minute. So, sorry, when we're running NGWOC. If I start my NGWOC tunnel here, in a second or two later, we get an address. Now, that's really useful. So, along here, B3, uh, B43F dash 21318 whatever dot so we now have a, a web address which is our node red application on the internet um, now the problem is every time because we're on the free tier here if i switch that off and switch it on again every time ngoc connects it gives us a new random address um, so that's a little bit tedious but it just means we want to make sure that that doesn't change so uh, we'll start that up we'll get our address and we'll copy the value of that what I'll do is just to make sure then that we don't uh, we don't accidentally restart anything while we're working on it. I'll open a second uh, a second tab on my canvas, which means I can leave NGWOC here, and we can work on stuff in here. And as long as we're only deploying changed nodes, the NGWOC node shouldn't restart. So we've got our NGWOC uh, server address there. Okay, we'll go over to our Jambones uh, application. I'm using Jambones XYZ, the European server for this, um, and we're going to set up an application. So we'll go to applications. And we'll click add a new application. We're going to call our application NGWOC. Okay. And I'm going to pop that in as my webhook. Oops, hasn't copied. Uh, so I'll drop in my NGWOC URL and then I'll add forward slash answer to the end. Uh, we'll have status as well, just in case. Uh, we won't worry about messaging. Uh, I'm going to change my default venue. Uh, speech vendor to AWS because that's what I've got configured and uh, we'll have the British voices similarly we'll make those our defaults and there we go and so we've got our application so now we have an application configured in Jambones pointing to our NGWOC URL if we do end up restarting this NGWOC process for any reason or node red restarts then you need to come back in uh, reconnect NGWOC and come back in here to change the address. As I say, um, it's a little bit tedious, but if you uh, if you pay NGWOC, they'll give you a, a persistent address that you can choose your own permanent one, um, or you can even run NGWOC outside of Node-RED, which just means it, it may stay running a little bit longer just in case anything crashes when you're developing. Uh, but we should be fine for this for now. The other thing we need to do is to now to configure a phone number. So I've already set up a carrier. Uh, I've got Twilio set up with a phone number from them pointing, uh, pointing to Jambones. So I'm going to add, so we'll put our number in, 44117200-1500. Carrier Twilio, application NGROC, add phone number, that looks better. Great, so now this phone number uh, is pointing to our NGROC application, which is running here on Node-RED. In our second, uh, second tab of the flow, we can now build our Jambones handler. So let's start with something pretty simple. Uh, the incoming webhook is going to be 
slash answer. And then we need to put some verbs in there. So what we'll do is we'll put a little pause in just because uh, sometimes things connect a bit too quickly and you don't hear it. So we'll have a two second pause and then we'll have some speech. Uh, we have our say verb. And we will say, hello world. This is Jan Barnes being controlled by Mike Red. Uh, we can leave our vendor and application as default. And then this is quite important. We need to actually close out our webhook here. So we'll add a, a webhook out to just make sure that the response is sent. So what happens here is the webhook comes in, this builds our response, and then this actually makes makes Jamba uh, makes Node Red send it to Jamba. It's, if you don't do that, it'll just hang. We'll close that. Uh, the other thing actually I'm going to do, just so we know what's happening, is I'm going to attach a debug node here so that we capture and log what's sent in. Um, I'll change that to the complete message object. So we'll see everything that comes out of out of that uh, webhook node will be logged to our terminal here as well as uh, as well as carrying on through this way. Great. So now let's bring up our soft phone and then we'll number. We'll dial our number. Hello world. This is Jambon being controlled by Node Red. Cool. And hopefully you heard that. Hello world, this is Jambones being controlled by Node Red. And you can see there that our, uh, our message object, and the important thing being the message.call part of the object, has all the various uh, parameters of what was sent with the call. So this is our webhook coming from, from Jambones. The number it was calling from, the number that was being called, um, and a few other, few other pieces of information, things like the call uh, SIG you might need or something when you start doing more, more interesting stuff. So yeah, pretty easy there. Um, let's let's try building something a little bit more uh, a little bit more interesting though than just hello world. So in this case, we're going to do let's do a simple IVR. Uh, I'm going to delete. Uh, actually, I will leave. No, I'll I'll delete the say node. And instead of the say, we'll keep the pause because that's kind of useful. We're going to use the gather node. So the gather node is for collecting input. That's there out the way. Uh, there. Now our gather node. First thing we need to do with our gather node is tell it where do you go once you've collected some input. Um, so it'll send another webhook to our application um, at, at a different address. In this case we'll configure our second one as slash input or maybe let's use slash input one just in case we were going to build uh, build multiple trees. Um, now we have a, a prompt we can configure as part of the gather so we'll say hello thanks for calling Please press one for sales or two for support. Really simple little menu for a small business. Uh, we can leave our vendor again as default. We're going to expect DTMF. Um, we're not going to have speech input. Uh, the number of digits we're expecting them to send is just one digit. And uh, let's set the timeout. Let's give them quite a long time. If they don't press anything, it'll time out in 10 seconds. Okay, and we'll wire that gather to there. Now we need to build the handler for that input. So we've got a new webhook in coming in, and we said that was going to be on slash input one. Um, and then, so this is what do we do when we've got an input? What we want to do now is we need to examine uh, what's what's the source of that input. So in fact, if we uh, if we go to Jambones org docs. And we look at the webhooks for the gather. We should be able to see somewhere uh, the attributes. What, uh, where are the digits sent? So in the gather, down the bottom, it'll confirm to us. Uh, so this is what's in the action. If there was speech, then be a speech input. We're not using speech, uh, but if we're just using digits, then it'll include the digits property uh, in the payload. So that's going to be in our call payload that comes from Jambones. So you saw when our incoming call, we had message.call and then things like from and to. Um, in this time here, we'll have an additional value of uh, digits in here, which will contain our digits. So we can use some of the node red built-in nodes. We'll use the switch node. Uh, it's a little bit like an if statement to branch at different things depending on what that is. 
So if our property we're going to look at is message.call.digits, if the digit is one, we'll do something. If the digit is two, we'll do something else. And we'll set this to otherwise if the digit if digit is anything else, um, or even isn't present, so there was like a timeout or something like that occurred, we have a third path. Uh, we'll click that. So now we've got three outputs on this node which we can wire up. Um, the first one we'll deal with is what do we do if it wasn't one or two? And fairly easy, we'll just send them back to that original gather and, and loop them back around the menu, uh, keep asking them to either press one or two until uh, until they do something we like or the caller hangs up. Um, now, if they have pressed uh, pressed one, we, we're gonna connect them to sales. So just to be nice, we'll add a little prompt saying, connecting you to sales. And then we need to do something to connect the call. So let's use the dial verb. Um, let's imagine our sales guys are out in a separate office. Uh, the number we're going to call, so their number is 212-555-1222. Just a made up number for now. Uh, we can leave pretty much everything else uh, as is. Uh, the caller ID, we may, because it's Twilio, need to use one of our numbers for the, uh, for the caller ID to go out on. So we'll use the same number that they called in from. Uh, and then we need Actually, instead of using another webhook out, we can just reuse this node because uh, it doesn't really matter which which one, as long as the path ends on a webhook out node, it'll send anything that comes into that path. Uh, so that's the path for sales. We'll do a path for support. Connecting you to support. Uh, similarly, we'll use another dial. This time, we'll say that they're in San Francisco, 415-555-1000. And again, it's all for, we'll just put the caller ID as one of our numbers. And we'll connect that path that way. So now you can see when the input comes in, we're going to switch uh, based on what the value of digits was. If it's one, we're going to play a say that says connecting to sales. We're going to forward to bridge the call onto the sales number. Uh, if it was two, we'll do something similar. We'll just say connecting to support, connect to a different number. And if it wasn't one or two, we'll uh, we'll just go back around the loop. There we go. Uh, also, let's just be useful and add another debug here. So we can make sure we see our input. And I'll clear this just so we clear our, clear our debug. OK. So let's give this a try. Hello, thanks for calling. Please press one for sales or two for support. I'll press three. Hello, thanks for calling. Send us Please press again. one for sales or two for support. I'll press one. Connecting you to sales. Connecting to sales. Okay, and the call ends uh, just because we're calling a, a fictitious number in this dial. So uh, it, it failed quite quickly because there wasn't a real number to dial. Uh, but what we can see now is what happened as well with our debugs. So this debug message, if you look um, at the green debug nodes, you'll see some orange dots appear when I hover over one. So this is uh, this is the first one. So this is our incoming call from the node. And then this is the on the second debug node. This is our input. So we should see a message call. Uh, the digits that were pressed, and the digit was three. Uh, we're using DTMS detected. So because I pressed three, we therefore went back up through this path through the gather again um, and the second time I did it I pressed one I think it was so yep we pressed one and therefore we took this path um, so there you have it uh, that's uh, a really simple uh, starter for an IVR based on uh, node red with Jambones